Oh, hey. I'm glad you were able to make it. Welcome to your first session in Engineering Spy School. There are a lot of forces out there. As engineers, we're going to need to make sure we can design systems to handle those forces. Now in today's lesson, we're going to review how to draw axial force shear and bending moment diagrams. Now before we go ahead and get started, we're going to need to have some basic ground rules for your training. So in today's lesson, you can expect to establish a sign convention for axial force shear and bending moment in beams and frames. We're going to solve axial force shear and moment at a point in statically determinate systems. Then we're going to solve for axial force shear and moment as a function. And then lastly, we are going to sketch shear and moment diagrams using the method of inspection. Now, in order to complete your training, you're going to have to fulfill two top secret missions. Now, if we're gonna be successful in these missions, we're gonna to have to remember a few things from statics class. So, uh, basically, from statics, we know that a beam is different than a truss member because in addition to tension and compression, beams, because of transverse loads, have to resist shear and moment as well. Now, as engineers, we need to make sure that we can design any beam, any member, for any loads that are acting on it and make sure that it's designed to act safely. Now, uh, just again to review what axial force shear and moment are, I have a just kind of simple demonstration. Here's axial force, right? So we talk about tension or we talk about compression. Uh, for shear, shear is like a ripping force, right? So I feel like it's easy to see in this paper. I'm going to kind of move this side up and this side down, and we kind of get this action, but it's almost like we're trying to rip the paper apart. Lastly, we have bending moment. Bending moment is, you know, what causes most of the deflection in our beam members. Um, and basically it leads to what we call a smiley face or a frown face beam member, if you remember that from statics class. Now, in order to be successful in our mission, we are going to have to speak in the same code. And that means that you and I need to have the same sign convention now let's take a look at what that sign convention is. All right, so now our training started. Let's take a look at sign convention. All right, our positive axial force we know is tension, right? And we express tension as acting away from the cut. So here we have an arrow acting away from the surface of our cut on either side. Alternatively, we have compression. Compression is pressing against those cuts, and that is what we consider our negative sign convention. All right, moving on to shear force, our positive sign convention. Uh, it's a little goofy. We're just gonna do left on the, it's gonna be up on the left cut and down on the right cut, which basically causes clockwise shear. Now we do this mainly for our moment sign convention, because this will lead to a moment that will be clockwise on the left and counterclockwise on the right, which basically bends the beam into what we call a smile, right? So basically positive sign convention is happy. Uh, if you're a mathematic person, you can call this concave up if you would rather. So that's perfectly legit. Um, but anyhow, that's why we picked the shear sign convention. And then we'll go ahead and throw in our negative sign conventions. It's just opposite the positive ones. So counterclockwise for shear, anticlockwise if you're from the UK or Australia. And for moment, it'll be what causes concave down bending or uh, more colloquially, uh, just a sad face. All right, so this is the sign convention we'll use. Let's go ahead and put it into action. Um, so for this particular problem, uh, we have a procedure. 
any good spy will follow their procedure. So basically compute the reactions if necessary, then cut the structure at the point of interest. I uh, be sure to consider both one and two as you're doing this, um, because of course, if you cut the structure, you might be able to see if the reactions are in fact necessary. Then we'll use equilibrium to solve for the axial force, shear, and moment. Um, one thing is to be certain to properly draw the internal forces at the cut. And when we make this cut, we're always going to use the positive sign convention that we defined on the previous page. All right, so let's go ahead and try example 1a. Uh, in this problem, we're asked to solve for the axial force shear moment at point D. Uh, and you can see this beam. The beam has a distributed load from A to B of 2 kips per feet, an 8 kip point load vertically at, uh, down at E, and then a 10 kip point load at C that's acting at an angle to the horizontal of 45 degrees. Our first step is to compute the reactions, so let's sketch them in. Uh, here I'm plotting uh, AY, our vertical reaction, AX, a horizontal reaction, and then our fixed end moment, MA. All right, the next part is to cut the structure at the point of interest. Uh, and so our point of interest in this problem is point D. So we'll go ahead and we will cut through point D to create our free body diagram. Now we know for a free body diagram, we have to make a complete circle. So we can either head to the left around A or head to the right around C. Um, if we head to the left around A, we see that we circle quite a bit of forces and we haven't really solved for those reactions at A yet. And then we would also have the unknown values at D. Um, so that's a lot of forces. So let's see what happens if we go the other way. If we go the other way, we'll only have the unknown forces at D, so that'll cut back on the amount of work uh, mathematically that we'll have to do for this problem. And basically, this means we don't have to do uh, step one. So taking this free body diagram, we're going to go ahead and make a cut at D, uh, and we're going to just sketch what we see inside the bubble. Uh, so I have a beam with a cut. Inside the cut, I have a 10 kip load acting at an angle of 45 degrees to the horizontal. So I'll make sure I get that sketched in properly. Um, and then at the cut at D, we have internal forces. So remember from statics, we have internal forces, axial force, shear, and bending moment. And we're going to put these in in the positive sign convention. So if we go back to the previous page, uh, you can see that the cut was on the left-hand side of the beam. So I'm just going to go down the you know, column here for the positive sign convention, but looking only at the left-hand cut. So that's going to put our axial force going to the left or away from the cut. So let's go ahead and sketch that in. All right, for shear, I go back and again, I look at the left-hand side. I see that for shear, my internal force will be upward. And likewise, for moment, I see that the moment will be clockwise. So I'm gonna sketch those two forces I just circled in the arrows onto this free body diagram. And this is now my positive sign convention for axial force, shear, and moment for my cut at point D. All right, is my free body diagram complete? Hopefully you said no, you have to get the distance in, Dr. Betts. Um, so there you go. Uh, we have to get the distance in two feet, and I think now we have a complete free body diagram. In statics, we do free body diagrams, and then we do equilibrium equations. So nothing changes here in mechanics and materials. Uh, we have a nice free body diagram. Now let's do equilibrium. Um, so for equilibrium, we'll start with some forces in the X. Uh, and so that'll give us negative axial force at D minus 10 kips, uh, component cosine 45 degrees equals zero. So we do a little bit of math. The axial force at D is a negative 7.071 kips. Negative implies that it is in compression because negative is our negative sign convention is compression. We can also sketch that element in so that there's no confusion. 
Uh, and so we can clearly see that the beam is in compression. All right, next we'll sum forces in the y. Uh, so that'll give us the shear at d, vd, minus 10 kips times sine 45 degrees, our vertical component. Uh, and that's going to equal zero. Uh, and so vd is going to be 7.071 kips. Again, this is now positive shear. So I'm just going to look at the positive shear convention, which is clockwise. So that's up on the left and down on the right. And I'm just gonna repeat that kind of picture of my positive sign convention here for shear. The nice part about putting these little pictures is that no matter what sign convention you use, these pictures remain the same. So these pictures, these little pictorial things will always be the same no matter what sign convention you choose. So this is a good way to tell other engineers what you're doing. Lastly, we'll sum the moments at D, and I'll take counterclockwise to be our positive um, for my moment equation. Um, and so that's going to give me the negative uh, moment at the cut D. Uh, my axial force and shear intersect that point, so they don't contribute to the moment. And then all I have is the vertical component of the force, 10 kips sine 45, um, times the distance away from point D, which is 2 feet. Um, and then we'll consider that the horizontal component creates a negligible moment. We'll assume the beam is thin um, and so that there's really no additional moment from the horizontal component. So doing our math, we get that the moment at D is negative 14.142 kip feet. Again, I check my negative sign convention for moment. That means it's a sad beam or that it's concave down at point D. Um, so hopefully this is a good recall of everything we did in statics. Uh, for finding axial force shear moment at a point. Congratulations, you just finished your first training problem. All right, seems like that means you need to go ahead and start your top secret mission. Go ahead and open top secret mission envelope one. Or in your case, maybe just flip to page 14-2A in your notes. And go ahead and give this example problem a try. Now, if I were you, I would go ahead and pause this video right here and try solving that by yourself. Meanwhile, I'm gonna have to take care of a few things. Hey, I hope your solution methods were on point. If not, go ahead and take a look at the solution for example 1b. All right, so if you had some problems with example 1b, here's the solution for it. Uh, so we're gonna start just like last time, making a cut at the point of interest, which in this case is point B. And let's loop around to the right so we avoid those reactions at A again. We'll sketch the free body diagram of the beam that we see inside our circle. So that beam contains the 10 kip force at point C again on the 45 degree angle. And then it also contains an 8 kip force at E. So we'll make sure we sketch that in. Uh, then we have to get our forces at the cut. So at point B, we sketch in our positive sign convention for axial force at B, shear at B, and moment at B. Lastly, we add in our dimensions and our free by diagram will be complete. So that is five feet from point B to point E and then seven feet from E to C. Once we have a good free by diagram, we do our equilibrium equations. And we should be able to solve for the three forces in red in the free body diagram picture. So starting with some forces in the x direction, we get a negative nb minus 10 kips cosine 45 degrees, and that equals zero. 
So solving for the axial force at B, we get 7.071 kips, a negative 7.071 kips. The negative implies compression, and we'll go ahead and sketch a little block in compression. Next, we move on to some forces in the y direction. So let me go ahead and uh, correct that y. All right, so some force in the y direction, we have uh, positive VB minus 8 kips minus 10 kips sine 45 degrees. So that's the vertical component of the force equals zero. So solving for the shear at B, we now have a positive 15.071 kips. And again, we'll sketch in our positive direction. And the great thing about that little element shape is it's almost like, you know, it, 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 no matter what sign convention you use, that will always speak to the true direction. Lastly, we sum our moments at B. So this is going to give us a negative MB. Uh, the axial force and shear intersect B so they don't create components. So we're left with an 8 kips times 5 feet, and that's going to be negative because it causes clockwise rotation relative to B. And a 10 kips sine 45 degrees times 12 feet, the lever arm. And that's going to be minus because it's also creating clockwise motion relative to point B. Set that equal to zero and solve for the moment at B. We get a negative 124.85 kip feet. Negative mean the beam is concave down or is sad or bending downwards in our particular problem. So hopefully that helps you uh, solve the problem.